Okay, so let's talk about debugging Python programs. We're going to use PDB, which is the Python debugger. It's included in the Python standard library. I'm going to walk you through some slides and talk about PDB a little bit, and then we'll demonstrate it on some code, and you can see how we can explore uh, the execution of our code. Uh, before I tell you how to use PDB, it's worth saying there are times when it's better not to debug. Uh, as students, you're sometimes curious as to exactly what's happening, and it's fun to exploratorily code, step through your code and see what's going on. Um, but it is worthwhile sometimes to stop and understand, think about what's going on uh, before you just kind of blindly follow the path of execution. Uh, it's also worthwhile to note that PDB is not the best Python debugger. You might investigate WinPDB for a good uh, GUI debugger that works cross-platform. It works on Windows, Linux, and Mac. Python uh, debugger is always there. It's in the standard library, and I frequently have used it. Um, from a console to, to debug remote servers, uh, it's, it's kind of the fallback, and so it's worth being familiar with, even if you don't plan to use it in your day-to-day -day work. Uh, so launching PDB. To get into PDB, there's a couple of ways. If you're investigating a crashing script, you might do postmortem debugging. You can launch PDB uh, by specifying the dash m command to your Python executable, which takes a module name, and the module name for PDB is unsurprisingly PDB, and specify your script. And that will start your script under the control of the debugger. You can tell it to run, and it will resume debugger control when your script crashes. So if you're expecting, um, expecting a crash, you can start with postmortem debugging. And you can also do that by, uh, from an interactive command line, importing your buggy script, importing PDB, running the uh, functionality that makes your script crash, and launching the postmortem command of the PDB module, which Again, we'll transfer you to PDB command control uh, at the point where your script crashed. You can investigate the crash. We're not going to do that. 90% um, of the time when I run the PDB um, module, I do it by importing PDB and inserting a set trace call at the point in my script where I want debugger uh, command to take over, which frequently is not right at the beginning. Once I've switched to PDB, I have a console shell that says PDB, and I have a bunch of commands that I can type. Uh, this is a list of all of them. It looks kind of imposing. Uh, many of them are doubled, so it's not quite as imposing as it might seem. For instance, C command is the same as continue. So there's not quite as many as it looks. And in daily practice, actually, you'll use just a set of small commands. Uh, L, you can just use L or type the full list command. Shows where you are in your code. In steps to the next line of execution. C uh, leaves debugger control and executes your code normally. S uh, steps into the next line of execution, including into function calls if they exist. Uh, R steps to the end of the currently executing function. And B sets breakpoints, which we'll see in a moment. And it's important to realize um, when you're debugging that from the PDB console, you can type in any valid Python changing variables um, or execution flow of your program and inspecting their values. So that's, that's actually what you spend the most time doing and then use a few simple commands. So let's go ahead and run a Python program and use PDB. Uh, bubble sort is one of the slowest and stupidest sorts that you can write. Um, but just reading the code, it might not be obvious what's going on. So we're going to step through it interactively. OK, so I'll stick here and stay in the console. So this is my bubble sort. And I'm going to uncomment my PDB line. So when I run um, this Python program again, the PDB console will take, uh, take control here at the set trace line. So let's do that. It goes ahead and initializes my array with my random integers. And now I'm actually at the PDB console. You can see um, that instead of having a typical Python console, it says PDB in parentheses. If I don't remember the list of commands, I can always type question mark or help to see all the commands. But let's try a few out. L, or list, shows my current execution point. You can see there's a little arrow beside line 28, and I'm about to call a function called bubble sort. So let's go ahead and step into that function um, with the s or step command. It steps on to the next, uh, the next line, which is the definition of my function bubble sort. And I'm going to next a couple times here. Let's look at our code again. Um, this is the bubble sort itself. 
And bubble sort is basically a uh, as dumb a sort as you can possibly write. It says, look at, uh, grab the first object and compare it to every single other object, uh, passing it up the chain if it's larger until you've gone all the way to the end of your objects. And now you're guaranteed that that one object uh, is in the proper order. Now go back and grab the next, uh, the next object in your list. So it's got a pair of nested for statements. And if I'm not really sure what my current passes left is, I can evaluate it and see that it's currently 18. If I want to look at my list, I type L. And you'll notice that actually showed me some code again. The only limitation to valid Python is that it can't conflict with PDB built-in commands. So I want to look at my list whose name is L. I have to say printL to get to it. List shows the code, but it doesn't necessarily show where I am. If you continue to list, it'll page down. You can specify a line number to list. So I'm going to look around line 20. I'm currently executing on 18. Where always shows your current execution point, and that includes the stack trace. So I can see uh, that I started out in, on line 28 in bubble.py. I called a function, and I'm currently executing line 18 in, uh, in the sub function. So let's go ahead and set a breakpoint, um, because we don't want to step through all the loops. And let's make the breakpoint be line 21. I do that with the b command, and I'm specifying the line. And if I list my code again, listing line 21, you can see my current execution is on line 18. And the breakpoint is indicated by a b on line 21. And I'm now going to type the c command to continue. And that runs down to my breakpoint, including however many uh, trips through the for loop were necessary. And I'm now executing line 21, which is my breakpoint. I'm back into PDB control. Let's step into display list. And display list is a simple function that just for each value in our list, prints a string times the value. And we're not really interested, so I'm going to use the r command which runs until the function's return point. So I'm now at the end of my display function, and I've resumed PDB control. So I can go next back into my bubble sort function. And I could continue to step through uh, checking and potentially changing variables if I wanted to. I'm not really debugging here, so I don't have a problem to solve. So I'm just going to continue to the end. And notice I'm hitting my breakpoint again, so I'm going to quit with Q. That should be enough to get you started with PDB. PDB is not a sophisticated debugger. It doesn't include uh, features you might be used to from graphical debuggers like watches. Um, but it's worth investigating some of the tricks you can perform with the commands function um, on breakpoints. Uh, you can get a surprising amount of mileage out of the console application. And its best feature is that it's always there. So I hope you've learned something. And um, thanks for uh, watching this Python how-to with Maracana. Hope to see you in class soon.